Manam Gadanya Bidam Jandam Jalama Zanja Rimbo Jala Zara Dudu Manam Gadanya Bidam Jandam Jalama Dudu Raja Jekula Zara Manam Gadanya Bidam Jandam Jalama Dijan Lanja Zubi Kula Zara Dudu Manam Gadanya Bidam Jandam Jalama Dujan Rubi Kula Zara Dudu Manam Gadanya Bizim Jantam Jalama Sanjay Rimbo Jala Sarva Dutu Manam Gadanya Bizim Jantam Jalama Tudra Jijay Kula Sarva Dutu Manam Gadanya Bizim Jantam Jalama Sanjay Rimbo Jala Sarva Dutu Manam Gadanya Bizim Jantam Jalama Sanjay Rimbo Jala Sarva Dutu Manam Gadanya Bizim Jantam Jalama Sanjay Rimbo Jala Sarva Dutu Manam Gadanya Bizim Jantam Jalama Sanjay Rimbo Jala Sarva Dutu Dezoman nam gadanya besim jantam jelama Tureci jekula sorva Dezoman nam gadanya besim jantam jelama Dejen lonca zubi kula sorva Dezoman nam gadanya besim jantam jelama Tuci kribi kula sorva Dezoman I'd like to welcome everybody today um uh, this platform i like to talk about awakening a dignity book and uh, why they came out at uh, this book um actually my own um spiritual uh, journey you can say or my own uh, my own life um i'm very fortunate to meet many great uh, practitioners and uh, many great uh, role models or uh, a really great people. So, and my own self, um, as usual, usual with many of us, with a baggage of uh, habits and uh, very busy and uh, caught into your own uh, self-observation and uh, all these kind of modern and general problems such as um, judgmental worry about the people's opinion um, not being confident um, very unsteady uh, um, then of course then you have extra anger and all that comes out after <laughs> So um, through my transformation in my life, um, I saw gentle by gentle uh, transformation. Still, I have a long way to go, but uh, I can see the transformation through variety of teachings. So one of the teaching that really touch my heart and I actually uh, tried my best to practice is actually the called dignity practice. So the dignity practice is the you need to start with the one principle, the first principle. Um, no matter your background have religious or non-religious or whatever nature uh, you in here you have a belief or not belief or spiritual or not spiritual just as any being any any human being um that very important the uh, what we need to remember and remind is uh, our nature uh, nature of our body nature of our feeling nature of our thoughts nature of our um, speech nature of our mind basically all the experiences that we have the sense that nature the uh, core mm, the essence is absolutely uncorrupted by our bad habits mm, negative thoughts negative emotions neg negative uh, uh, memories nature never corrupted at all mm. so make a very short we need to remember that our nature is pure our nature is perfect 
So beginning, it took time because I never saw, I never experienced. So it's very difficult to really, you know, actualize and become more steady. So what happened is, uh, it is a very normal. I know that almost everybody going to go through this uh, that journey because you we are not um, familiarized. We never taught. Uh, we never introduce that our core, our essence, and our nature is actually perfect. So, how to begin with that is first we need to um, reflect. Um, so we need to learn to reflect um, our actions and our habits. So for that, the second part of the principle, just knowing and remind, reminding our nature is perfect is not really enough because uh, our keep um, judgment uh, habit, it comes in and uh, creates a lot of uh, extra Mm, emotions, negative emotions, and sadness and happiness and all that through judgment uh, habits, judgment mind. So what we need to do is we need to learn to notice, but not to judge. So that distinguishing these two is one of the most important principle to improve our dignity, path of dignity. Now, for my own self, I took many years to develop because I was a very judgmental person, very much very judgmental person. Um, when you are more educated, more a little bit more um, um, survival in better, better, better in survival, you have some smart in the street. You know how to articulate words. You know how to treat people to survive. That kind of nature that we are, that is the world we'd be living. What happened is our judgment becomes so used, so high level, that we actually forgot how to learn to develop the noticing can be actually a very great survival tool, but we able to know to uh, improve that, but part of our quality, but we actually held on and completely become habit into the, our judgment mind. So the differences, it is true, is very important. Noticing is just to see positive and negative and see the differences. For example, when somebody is speaking very harshly, you need to notice that this person is speaking harshly. But judgment, what happened is when somebody speak very harshly, and not only just you knowing the person is harshly, but you actually creating, you dislike the person, then you add additional, I didn't do anything wrong, nobody done wrong, why the person is very uh, uh, disrespect, uh, I have my own right, and you know, they, all the extra additionals, mm, thoughts, and many change of thoughts, chain, chain, change a chain of thoughts, and creates uh, negative reactions. And that really comes, I, when I speaking, is a very kind of slow, but when it comes in level of the speed in your mind, it goes in, in second. That is the how fast we actually judge and have emotions. So that's why it's a very difficult to uh, noticing and not to judge. So all the things that we learn, whether you do meditation or whatever, very important to learn to noticing and not to judge. So how the first is you're keeping the principle. Principle means you remember, okay, I'm not going to judge. 
I'm now I'm judging. You need to notice. Oh, I'm now judging because I have extra emotions. So I don't want to judge now. Okay, I've stopped now. Exhale my breath. So okay, I don't want to go forward. So you kind of full stop. It's a little bit artificial, but uh, it's going to be good enough for the beginning. Huh? So you want to learn more about that. Uh -huh. You want to learn more about that. You know, then you really need to get the book. Yeah, because the whole idea they came out with the book because I don't need to explain repeatedly again and again. So the book is there for you for guidance. So I have one. We have one saying. There was a great master. Um, his name is Thakpur Rinpoche, Gambopa, over 900 years ago, more than 900 years ago. His disciple of Melarepa is a, one of the most well-known teacher in meditation tradition in Tibet. Thakpur Rinpoche have one book called Jew Ornament of Liberation. And he actually said, in the future disciples, that you're going to be full sad that you're not going to meet me personally because I'm already gone physically. Don't worry because I have this book written for you. When you see this book and apply this teaching, it's equally you meeting me. Because what, when you meet me, I'm going to say the same thing, what I written in the book. Likewise, you know, for the dignity teachings and dignity practice is so important, whether it's a spiritual or not spiritual, just in the normal life. But many of us, we actually um, kind of uh, neglected the part of the most important quality of dignity. Now, we all heard about meditation. We all heard about compassion. We all heard about yoga practices, physical yoga practices. But we hardly hear about training a dignity. Now, the problem I see is this. You can have a compassion. But when you don't have no confidence, you don't have no dignity or confidence, the compassion actually does not have the potential to act. So your compassion cannot improve a limitless potential uh, in impact from the compassion because the really impact comes is actually from the confidence and dignity. Likewise, people who do meditation, you really want to improve meditation um, improvement um, comfortably, smoothly, and very gently you want to improve without any hard work. I think one of the most important quality for the meditation is actually dignity. So many things in life is actually comes down to dignity. Many of us we have a lot of self-observation, self-focus, self-protection, self-observe. Why? Because that is the only tool, mental, emotional tool that we know to protect. When you have a dignity, a confidence, we, we don't need to be self-focus, self-observe, and self-protection because the dignity itself is the greatest armor of our own mind and our own personality. Because of we actually forgotten completely, that's why reintroducing takes time and takes time on developing the practices. And they're going to have a journey, your loved ones, your friends, your family members, and people who are surrounding you can challenge on your confidence and your dignity. And that time is really useful. Read the book and find the different methods 
and tools that mentioned in the text, in the book, and you apply that independently and see how it's effective, how to you know, uh, learn to uh, uh, apply different methods and go into your right path in your life. Now, most important part is we always talk about confidence or dignity, but then we talk about pride. And I want to say that different. Pride have very fragile, actually, but at the same time, pride is a, is a naturally self-observation. It's actually very much quality of pride. So it's a actually high maintenance. It's quite high maintenance when you're really a proud person. It's not that easy. You know, it's quite tiring to be very proud. But we become so used to do it, you don't feel tired, but physically and emotionally, you stress out. Huh? But when you have the dignity, when you have confidence shine through, through, through dignity, what happened is that kind of self-maintenance and self-observation, the high maintenance and self-observation, the pride, when they you know, subside, what happened is you actually become much more relaxed. Uh, you not really interfere by people's opinion. Uh, you not going to take personally means dignity and confidence actually is a very steady, is actually one of the most, um, um, I cannot say powerful, but very strength. The strength is a very, very high level strength. It's not a very low level, easy to break, like a pride. So dignity is actually, I can compare like a diamond, the strength of the diamond. But uh, please don't mistaken that the, the dignity is a part of ego, part of me, that's not like dignity is actually the nature of all. Our body, our speech, and our mind and emotions. Whether it is negative emotions, whether it's a positive emotions, nature is always perfect and nature is always clean and pure. Now, we need to learn to uh, re re, you know, remember and remind, almost like a, a regular mantra. You know, I, they have one Hindu mantra that I really uh, sometimes like. They call Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Shanti means calm down, peaceful. <laughs> so I think really important mantra, I feel this, these days, this age, is actually called your nature is perfect. Our, my nature is perfect. My nature is pure. Now, in the book, they're going to explain many different ways, very beautifully. Huh? But I want to say one thing I think is important for me to tell you. Now, that nature is perfect and clean. The question comes up very naturally, automatically. Who created this? Am I created this? Am I creating now? Or someone, somebody created? And the answer is this. Nature is uncreated. You did not create it. No one created. Nature is always, how you say, inseparably there. Yeah? But it's not created. When it's created, then it's not nature. Yeah. So that I think important, I want to highlight. So when you feel more uh, improvement, uh, you improve on more like a noticing, your judgment is more as kind of subside, a little bit reduce, or you can say transform. Your pride is a little bit more or less, you self-observe or um, per taking personally easily, that kind of thing, uh, pattern and habits uh, become uh, reduced. Then what happens is 
is a very is the easy to arise. Many of our compassion actually is the what what we really hungry for our own self. We do practice compassion, but we actually hungry for our own self for compassion. So that's why our compassion actually, on my own experience, the compassion is not really genuine compassion, because that that compassion is always a little bit of self uh, observe self uh, self flesh self self uh, uh, connected. Uh, selfish uh, compassion, but it's not really obvious. But dignity, you're more comfortable to dignity when you practice compassion. The compassion is already everything is going to be towards all the beings, other beings. But you don't need to always focus to yourself. Mm-hmm. So that I feel is a very big difference. Then the fear of spiritual practices, uncomfortable of certain practices in spiritual. All that going to be disappear when you develop more uh, cautious and more gradually on practicing dignity. Please check yourself right now that look at yourself and reflect yourself. We think we're very you know, tough, someone, somebody here, somebody think I'm very, very weak. Don't look at that part of the I'm very weak or I'm very strong, I'm very normal, but go beyond that. The nature of that actually is the pure. So right now we cannot experience this because we don't have the method to that, but slowly, gradually, you know, what does it really mean nature is pure? I want to say a little bit now. What does it really mean pure? Naturally pure. Our na- I am, that, that actually means all the afflictions, all the afflictions, all the sufferings, all the cause of sufferings is never there into the nature. The afflictions, cause of sufferings, the suffering never touch the nature, never dilute the nature, and never actually present, never present in the nature. That's why we say pure. So now, Slowly, by gradually, when you go through the different exercise and practices and slowly you improve, then you need to learn how to gradually improve, you know, more steady on the uh, dignity and more steady in confidence. How do you know? They have many different ways to practice, but you need different, different components. Like... Uh, Anything, you have a tea, you want to drink a tea. You need to have a water, you have a tea, you need to have fire to boil the water, and you need to have a cup to drink. Like that, you need to have different components together. So you want to uh, improve the noticing and reducing uh, judgment. Uh, You want to gain dignity, that kind of thing. You need different components. The first component that I think very important is to reflect. But reflect with a very healthy way. Notice, but don't judge. Then learn to do some different techniques of meditation. Then improvement on compassion. But then compassion must really need to be improved. Uh, uh, compassion need to be genuine. Now practice the compassion um to all the other beings but not need to be um uh, focused towards yourself or um, holding on uh, in, uh, um, the meritorial and many buddhists we are attached to meritorial 
and um, uh, some spiritual they are you know uh, attached with experiences and uh, so no other people they are attached to you know transformation changing chemically healthy all that kind of all that kind of uh, um, uh, qualities of practicing compassion when you have that kind of in the mind what happens is actually dilutes the compassion so the compassion itself is need to be present but without any diluting of all the benefits whether you are a spiritual practitioner or religious practitioner or non-believers no matter what you can we have a lot of um, um, uh, attachment what is the going to be result of the practicing compassion so that i really think is very important have a baseline is the dignity because when you have nature is pure you're not really looking for other qualities and benefits so that's why the nature is pure is the one of the baseline one of the really greatest component to improve the the compassion to really improve in the highest level and to be uh, active and perfected the compassion you really need to have dignity now no matter what we practice in life whatever spiritual practice we really need to understand we can do it we can change we can transform we can help other we can help myself but we can help other when you look at the, the word i can help myself that question that wish itself is actually is ignorant because why is ignorant i can help myself means i am not i am i need to be fixed that actually itself is the question or wish is actually called ignorant i really think so when our nature is pure i can see i i'm going to say like this i i can transform i can change hmm? and the more than that i can see the nature yeah so it's very important seeing the nature is perfect seeing nature is a clean that is a genuine arising the dignity within yourself and that you don't owe to anyone that is nature but you need to owe one body of course you'd have teacher helping you to transform that of course you need like for example like me you know in this book you know one way majority of course some example Uh, and uh, some research and all these things is not you know my teachers but many of my explanations and uh, transformation and reflection all that kind of stuff is all come from great tradition of a great people on the past uh, you know generating giving to me and i receive and i'm humbly uh, sharing to you all to just keeping in one mind that i can really uh, wish that uh, as one somebody someone can change and that person can help somebody through their experiences and knowledges so this is my basic introducing about why is so important the dignity whether you are non believer non spiritual non religious or you are spiritual or you are religious or you are meditator i think the dignity practice is a one of the fundamental important and i am here today through my um, small small improvement in life through my practices and transformations and i know i can guarantee you our nature is really 100% pure not only my nature your nature and not only your nature all the being nature is absolutely 100% uncorrupted so i'm going to uh, say that in a very nice way to i think end on my my talk and uh, so i think they have some questions 
and I'm going to answer with the questions. Thank you so much, Rinpoche. Um, the first question submitted is, what are the qualities of someone who has dignity? And can you give us some examples, please? Humbleness, sincere humbleness, uh, genuine, very compassionate, but the compassionate and the humbleness can must must be must have two quality. Must have sincere and genuine. Because I've seen it many times in myself. We have this humbleness, but it's not sincere. So it's very important, genuine, sincere, compassionate, that kind of components. And is that is the greatest components of a, a dignifying, dignifying person. And very steady, huh? very steady. Okay, thank you, Rinpoche. The next question is, if we become angry with someone and lose contact with our dignity, how can we find it again? What is the best practice for this? So when we angry to somebody, uh, I think first we need to fix our own anger. Uh, of course, you know, some situations we need to act angrily because we need to fix some situations. We need to scold somebody, you know, uh, sometimes in the normal world, the real world, you can't fix everything just smiling and being nice. Sometimes we need to say something uh, negatively or harshly to fix something. But uh, I realized that when you, you need to transform, now I angry. So what we need to do is go back First, you exhale your breath. Don't fix with your anger. Fix your baseline, uh, your state of your mind. So you exhale. After exhale, then you bring up some uh, like a, like a noticing what happened, how happened, anger, you know how that happened in your emotions. Not why happened, huh? how happened. Then you practice some some compassion. Then it go back to remember our my nature is perfect. So it doesn't matter when you're angry just one, uh, two hours is, or a few minutes. It's not going to be uh, the greatest uh, uh, end of the world. Yeah. So you can go back and th that is the way to learn to reflect, hmm? to check how how we can improve. Hmm? Anger is the least problem actually. In the beginning, anger is looks really huge, but anger is the most one of the easiest to handle negative emotion is actually anger. Thank you, Rinpoche. How can we maintain dignity in the face of chronic illness and our eventual death? Don't <clears throat> don't look the chronic pain and the death as an object or subject, something like that. Just first go on your own transformation. Reconnect back to your nature. The chronic is going to be you know, painful. You know, or then you additional fear, additional feeling, additional observation on the pain, what is going to happen, judgment. All that extra emotion is a constantly judgment. See, that's why it's very important, you know, how to deal with fear, how to deal with the death. This kind of things, honestly, sometimes don't take too important. Don't take this kind of importance. Really important is the practice self. Don't judge. Do noticing. Nature is perfect. Just practice compassion. When you just focus that, majority of the question that you ask actually answer by itself through your experiences. But because you're not focusing the practice, you always want to fix something. They have endless to fix. So practice the heart, the core. Then when the heart, the poison of the heart change, everything going to be changed uh, to be better. Right? So the, my answer is going to be refocus the practice. 
the chronic and death, everything going to be answered by the practice self. Thank you, Rinpoche. If we always see everything from our own experience, is there a possibility that we can ever get sat outside of our ego? How does this relate to your teachings on dignity? Mm -hmm. That's very good. Uh, most important part is we should not attach to experiences. We, we should not attach to experiences. So I think this question have two level of uh, thing. One is the service answer and one is a deep answer. My service answer is very simple. Don't uh, uh, judge by your experiences, how you do it, okay? So that's why when it happened good through the practice, not good, don't worry about it. Don't attach to it. Don't attach to negative and positive, yeah? But the deep sense of the deep, then you need to go more, uh, uh, um, you need to do meditation basically. But meditation, not just sticking with um, uh, uh, experience meditation. We need to learn how to actually go beyond our um, clinging, our clinging, our perception, and then have a meditation go beyond our perception and clinging. Yeah, that is the one way to see our nature. Thank you, Rinpoche. What is the relationship between dignity, compassion, and wisdom? Dignity, I feel like, you know, really for my own feeling, my right now, my own observation to myself, dignity is the baseline, the base. The base meaning the way, actually, where you really sit, sit on. Compassion is like a heart where you react, what kind of... Uh, wish and feeling but uh, the wisdom is that actually knowing the truth how to react so without the dignity wisdom cannot uh, sometimes wisdom don't have the strength to decide <laughs> you i seen it so many people knowledgeable they comes to when they kind of comes to decisiveness you know on the practice uh, sometimes there are people who are very educated are not really decisive Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people really compassion, I've seen it, but they are similarly not decisive, not really um, reacted, you know, that. so that's why the dignity is the real component of compassion to react and judge uh, the wisdom to be really decisive, to really be basically the compassion and the wisdom to really want to see the result perfectly, the dignity is the component. Uh, thank you, Rinpoche. Um, the next question is, Rinpoche, some of my motivations are good, compassionate action, benefiting others, and so forth. But on the other hand, some of my motivations are bad, desiring fame, increasing reputation, and so forth. Sometimes it is very hard to separate the two, and I know that my pride is still a big problem. What is your advice on how to improve this? So what happened is this, you have a good thought, you have a bad thought. So now you need to put a scale, they both have 50-50. So now you scale the 50-50, the question is that, 50-50. So now what we should do it? That question really answer is the both nature of the scale, whether as a good feeling, a good motivation, or the rather is a bad motivation. The both nature of that is actually perfect. That means naturally the goodness is always heavier because bad thought nature is perfect. That's why many of our modern spiritual practitioners and actually Dharma practitioners and spiritual practitioners or non-practitioners. I tell you, we everybody says, oh yeah, you know, very important. I know it's compassion is important, it's really important, you know, uh, you know, good to have good role model, you know. But when it comes to our nature is pure, 
they always stuck their part. Ah, uh, really? Mm, um, I don't know. The human nature is always, you know, um, angry and fight and human survival. That is how, what how the species are. Uh, you know, we are hunter gatherer, and uh, you know, see that kind of shallow, really shallow level of human mind. You think that set of that mindset is a really can improve our uh, uh, internally transformation? You really think? Please think, observe. No, because you already full stop that that is our nature, and that is the the biggest obstacle I see in this age st st uh, practitioners who. Make yourself limited is myself. How our nature is really not a hundred percent pure because it's a human nature, Rinpoche. And they try to prove me. I have few students <laughs> telling me how the human nature is. I say I know how the human species and all the animals and change to apes and ape change. I understand all that, you know. But right now we're talking about something really universal transformation and who really stopping us to transformation completely is ourself me so that i really feel is the the greatest that's why the the book this book came out you know i think it's really really important because of that thank you rinpoche uh, the next question Sometimes my self-hatred is so great that I can't begin to imagine that my nature is pure. What do I do then? How can I turn my mind around on this point? <laughs> poor guy or poor lady, whoever you are, the question. Oh, oh it can be this is a very uh, not really good, not really question. It's just an articulate question. You know, the person can be lying to me too online. So doesn't matter. The good question. Uh, when the, I, I had uh, some time in my life that not really self-headed, but not having any uh, goodness that I see that I can transform. So what happened is, <clears throat> don't go uh, practice dignity. You know, I'm no, don't go there. First, exhale your breath, breathe out. Completely uh, bring down your negative thoughts. Exhale. Hold for two seconds. Do that. Calm down your that that judgment mind, that this it is uh, a busy busy body mind. Then from there, then slowly bring up because we, you feel you have too much self judgment. That is impermanent too. So it's going to change within few hours. Lie down, watch some movie. You can't watch movie, do run, run away, run, jogging, exercise for one hour, come back, feels good, or take a shower, or do some meditation, whatever. Yeah, then you practice the dignity. It takes a little time for that kind of person, but you can do it. Uh, thank you, Rinpoche. I think we have two more questions. The teachings on no self are always a little perplexing to me. How can I have dignity if I don't exist? <clears throat> so that is the one reason that I actually saying that dignity is the baseline of the wisdom that I, when I explaining to all of you. So when you explain to me, I, I'm not exist, I say, okay, I'm not exist, fine. Huh? The nature is pure, that's okay. So I'm, I don't mind. Now, for us, for you, for many of us, what happened is me means the I, not the nature, the I. So when you investigate the I, the I completely dissolves. Then you're terrified. Dignity is actually untouched by the I, uncreated by your mind, untouched by negative reflection. So the nature, is completely independent, unchanged, uncreated nature. 
So when you know our body, our speech, our mind, and the emotion, that nature is perfect like that, then why we need to worry about it to losing uh, identity of I? After all, that is kind of non-exist, by the way. So it's very easy. No self, uh, no self practices become so easy to understand when you have dignity. <laughs> when you don't have no dignity, no self is like terrifying. That's why the dignity training is a baseline of compassion and wisdom. But you need to learn correct way of dignity practice. So, get the book. Thank you, Rinpoche. The last question. What is the relationship between dignity and mindfulness? Mindfulness is a technique. Dignity is a nature. <laughs> now you see the difference. Dignity is a nature. Mindfulness is a technique. That actually what mindfulness should do, mindfulness should help us to bring our negative mind and our busy body mind to calm down, to actually to see the dignity. That is what nature is. But now what happened is we use the mindfulness to reduce the stress, but not to see nature. So mindfulness is a technique. Dignity is nature. It's a big difference. Me and my cloth. How important the clothes and how important me. So, so mindfulness is a cloth. Focusing to breath is my, my jump jumpsuit, swimming suit. <laughs> Focusing to my feelings, sensation, uh, my TDP suit, <laughs> tuxedo. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, all this kind of different, we have, we have, we have, I don't know how many techniques, all different techniques. It's like different practices, but to introduce, to realize what this nature is, means the dignity. Mm. Thank you, Rampa Chela. Um, so that's all the questions. Do you have anything else that you would like to uh, close with? In this book, we have meditation, compassion, a um, little bit mindfulness type practice, shamatha type practice. So it's a very important to get this book and honestly, really, and, uh, but don't read just one time. Read a few pages. Practice a little bit, exercise a little bit. See how getting through, seeping in. And one thing I want to let you all know, this book is not came out from my doing some research, other books, and uh, how to say this, that, you know, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying there here, all my speeches, is majority I explaining, giving teachings, and practicing myself, what are given to me by my teacher, practicing how much I can. Then our professor Sujen listen and put it all right down and show to me. And actually she did such a good job that actually the book is the, uh, sounds better than me. <laughs> My English is not so good. Sometimes I didn't know how to put all the things, you know, that I want to put. But the books actually put it quite a well done job. So really, this is not theory. That is what I want to say to you all. Please, this is not my theory. It's not my belief. It is actual. So awakening dignity is not awakening theory, 
not awakening belief. It's not awakening uh, religion. It's awakening dignity, awakening nature. Reconnect to our own nature. <laughs> Okay, so I'm very happy to um, uh, speak about the book and launching the book today, the Day of Dakini. I know it's a little bit uh, early uh, announcement, but uh, uh, I'm very happy um, that you all, you know, uh, come here and listen and please read and thoroughly and we can discuss more in the future and uh, thank you very much and all the contents are really beautiful name making friends with sticky mind how beautiful that is sticky mind so i'm really uh, hoping that can be benefit to you all